Green, XLR product manager for our Boost Plant 79. Today, I'm just going to take you on a quick tour of what we do behind the scenes. So right now, you can see that a frame is rolled into our chassis prep area. They've already installed the uh, axles, and they're in the process of putting on the ramp door hoop. In XLR, we always talk about our extra built items. So on our, on our frames, in our extra built items, you can look over this frame, and everywhere where you see a cross member, you don't see any cutouts. All the ribbing, all the structural strength, everything is intact on our frames because at XLR, unlike our competition, we don't cut holes in those uh, to make room for plumbing or holding tanks. You don't see any uh, uh, in-frame tubes coming through for slide outs because all of our slides, we made a conscious decision to be cable slides so that you're not blowing holes in the integrity of your frame to make room for those slides to go in and out, which also allows us over here in our water tank and holding tank prep to have the largest holding tanks uh, best in class in our industry. So in this area is where we actually take our holding tanks, our fresh water tanks, and we get them prepped and we get them ready to put in that frame that you see over there. Every tank that we use at XLR Boost is a 100 gallon tank, but that's with air. So when you see in our printed brochures and you see on our website, we publish that we have 87 gallon holding tanks. You actually have a 100 gallon tank, but that leaves you enough room with air and how we plumb that you're not gonna overfill your tank and be in jeopardy of causing damage to your unit. So that's another way that we use uh, an extra built item here at XLR Boost. These are your holding tanks. These are also uh, larger than our competition. So we use 36 gallon tanks, both on your black and on your gray. And every model that you get a half bath, you get an additional black tank. So you get that 72 gallons worth of uh, holding capacity on those models. We're gonna keep walking and moving up the line. So coming up here is where we build our floors. All of our floors are built like a traditional home is built. We build by two by threes. We build the, the floor out of two by three set on side. We have 16 inch on center, and then we use a five inch plywood tongue and groove for that top coat. And then for the, the trim and the, uh, <coughs> the visual aesthetic items, we're using a Congolium that has 100% uh, against cold cracking, um, tear resistant, oil and gas resistant, uh, along with the coin flooring that we use in your, in your basement. Everywhere where you see that there's a hole is where there's plumbing coming up for your holding tank, so they're getting that stage. Everywhere where you see a little puck, and if you can zoom in on here, that actually has extra structure built into the floor where your D-rings go in and have been tested up to 5,000 pounds for pull strength. When you come back over to the frame, now you can see that your fuel station has already been installed with your carbon canister and your fuel pumping station on the opposite side. They're starting to run the, the beginning of the, the wire harness that is gonna come up through the floor where you see that they already pre-drilled for the holes. They've taken a PVC underbelly, secured it all the way to the back, brought it all the way to the front to protect all your holding tanks and that wiring from debris and weather that's coming up through the road. And then by RBIA code, the reason why your holding tank and your fuel tank is open is by code we can't actually cover that up with your underbelly. You can see your 100 gallon tank and how it sets in. You can see both your holding tanks and how it sets in. One thing that we do here at uh, XLR, if you zoom in here over the top of this frame, if you ever wonder how we take the fresh water tank and we keep it from moving in station, we actually add these extra tabs and put it in with a, a hex head screw and that's what this tank rests against so that it's not sliding in between your frame members and back and forth when it's water when you're traveling up and down the road. Keep in mind, 
you're going to hear extra bell over and over again, and that's why we're heads above our competition. Moving forward, they're starting to put on the edging to be able to put on the, the aesthetics in the upper deck. The floor gets set back in that, so now you've seen it where the hoop's on it, the frame set, the uh, linoleum's on it, your coin flooring's on it, your D-rings are set, and this is what we call base cabinet set. So up above me is where they're starting to build all the cabinet face frames. Below me is where they're starting to assemble all the actual cabinets itself. They stage them in a line so that the base setters can go over, grab it for that model, put it up on the, the model, and that's where the walls and all the cabinets start getting screwed to the floor. One thing that I did forget to mention back in frames, in the back station, after the axles are set and we get them up, that's the first point where we actually take a, a torque wrench and it's torque wrench number one. So they go around all your axles and all your uh, lug nuts and they actually torque them to the first spec. So we torque them back in, in frame and chassis prep, we'll torque them in midline, and then the tractor driver, when he sets it out in the yard, torques them for a, a third time. So there are three times in our safety checks on lug nut torque and correct specificity that uh, gets monitored while it's moving up and down the line. So this is a good shot of the bare frame that you don't see it when it has all the walls on it and uh, the front skirting on it. You can see the, the extra storage that we're giving you up here in the upper deck in the fifth wheel. So that's one of the features that we added this year. We accomplished that by adding this drop frame from here to there. So we lowered the generator compartment down and the front battery compartment down that gave you all that, that storage to put chairs and waters and fishing poles up, uh, up in that upper deck, which is a very nice feature on a XLR fifth wheel. So coming out, of, coming out of base set, you're now starting to get into your your plumbing items, which is your shower bases and your shower surrounds and some of your sinks and your uh, PVC pipe that they're now gonna start adding into the walls that the base setters are setting and your cabinets are setting and you're gonna start seeing those plumbing items and your drain plumbing starting to get set and uh, put into the process. So those holes that I showed you back in the floor where they were through the 5 8 inch uh, Titan Group plywood. Now you actually see where the drain plumbing is actually coming up through those holes, coming up through your upper deck and coming up into your shower in this model. And we're walking over to our sidewall table where we build sidewalls and everything that we do in the, the sidewall area we do off of uh, pre-made pre jigs. So here you're seeing the, the finished product where they've actually already built the bones of the, the sidewall and they've already put all the panels on and stapled them and they're gonna get ready to uh, lay the seam tape on it. And then one cool thing at XLR that's an exclusive to us is that we actually use a uh, two-part uh, chemical compound to actually insulate our sidewalls. So we're using an A and B principle that uh, is a R7 or better equivalent. It actually has coverage all the way from the top to the bottom where it can't slip down as your regular home installation that you would use. Uh, old time uh, construction methods, you used to actually spray on a glue and then you would roll on your R7 insulation and then time periods down the road as it aged, that insulation would start to fall. In, in this process, as you can see, it's all the way up. It's all the way in the, the crevices and uh, you're getting a, a full coverage and it's also uh, water resistant. So sound barrier, water resistant, full coverage, new technology, extra built, exclusive to XLR. Moving around the corner here, we can actually show you how the, the bones are put together. So like I said, traditional built like a home. You can see the panel that got screwed to the top of the table with the measurements on it so that what that allows us to do is put this floor plan down and it allows the construction guys to basically repeat the consistency in our build over and over and over again 
so that uh, you as a consumer have confidence that, that your unit was built correct and built to the standards that we meant it to be. So let's go over here and we'll show you where we take these walls and how we hang them. So all these units, as you can see already, it's all by human made, uh, humans and uh, human power. So humans push the units on what we call in these tracks and trolley system on these rollers, and they push them over. And then every once in a while, like when we're doing a, a sidewall set, we get a little help from our mechanical friends and our, our hoist up top that basically holds all that pressure for them so that we can make sure that we're consistent each and every time on getting in on top of the floor. And then we actually have carriage bolts that will come back in here, bring it all the way down through the floor, back into which is attached to the frame. And that's what holds this sidewall onto your floor and your frame. And we missed back in uh, floor set, but floor set also gets tied into the frame with carriage bolts all the way through and then tied in. And then that's what that wall setting on. So not only is all of your oil resistant and liquid resistant flooring coming all the way over from edge to edge, your sidewall then is also setting on top of that. So moving up to the front of the unit, here's where you can see, we already talked about base set, we already talked about cabinet set, we're starting to get some of the main uh, beginning of the drain plumbing put into those holding tanks. We're plumbing them up into the wall. We don't have a roof yet to run all that plumbing through, so you're gonna see in the next stages how that comes all together. But some of your appliances are also starting to go in. So your water heaters are starting to get set into that cabinet fixture where they're gonna go. Some of the furnaces are going into those fixtures. So you're gonna see those appliances in these next few walk arounds. Continuing with your wall set, we showed you how we put the, the sidewalls on with the hoist on each side. We've got the, the guys over here making the, uh, the interior walls, but in this station, they also make your front walls. So on, uh, on a fifth wheel, we also foam those walls. So in the same principles that we're talking about, that we're using extra built uh, foam installation in the sidewalls, we're actually both using it in the front and the back. So you have that added protection behind your front cap so that at night where you're putting your head, you've got the, the best insulation in the RV industry. <laughs> A little bit about our sidewall construction that I, that I want you to understand. So we use basically a two by six base plate put on top of a, a welded steel beam. Those are the carriage bolts that I'm talking about that we said earlier. So now you can actually see the carriage bolts are actually all the way through the frame, all the way through the wall. And that's what's actually securing it, and it's holding it, it onto that frame, and also back back through the floor. And that, this is what we call uh, uh, upper deck slide. So it's one of our smaller slides. So you can see the opening. This is important. So some of our competition will stop their two by six at the edge of their opening. At XLR, it's another extra built item. Not only do we tie it into the, the secondary header and tie it up at the top, we also run that two by six all the way to the front. Because if you can imagine, when you actually tie that into the back of your truck on your fifth wheel, that's where you're actually getting the most flex. And how we keep the integrity of your unit together and reduce that flex is by tying that piece longer all the way in together. So keep that in mind while you're out there shopping. Here's where I could tell you, so you're starting to see your furnace put in. We can start seeing your heat ducts run. So all of our heat ducting is, is run above the floor, comes out through the cabinet. We actually do an airflow test uh, in those ducts just to make sure that it's actually not going to limit out your, your heater so it doesn't overheat and uh, runs the way that it was intended. All of our, our heaters are 35,000 BTU heaters, so we're not using any small heaters or cutting any corners here at XLR also. This is your, uh, your main slide out. 
So you're probably wondering, hey, how do you keep the integrity of your, your framing and keep everything square? So we keep this bottom base plate in all the way that you'll see that we won't cut this base plate out until we actually get ready to set the box. And that's what keeps that opening square. Along with in our, our competition, you can see the two by sixes going up the rails, but then we use a piece of what's called LVL in the construction industry, which actually is an engineered strongest beam in the industry to be the header. And we tie it way past the, the top of the opening in the top and way past the back. So again, we're using the same principles that I talked to you about in the little slide on the top of the big slide. And then again, you don't see any holes or anything for the mechanism of a slide out sitting out here because we intentionally chose to use cable slides so that we could have those bigger holding tanks, have the space and have the integrity in the frame without having to cut anything out in the frame and make that modification. We made a conscious decision this year to actually make uh, ladders a standard at XLR Boost, but we never changed our construction. So if you own a 21 or a 20, you see these two two by sixes here. That's in, that's in every Boost model that we prep it and made it so that if you wanted to add a ladder after the fact, you always have these two by sixes. In 2022, we made it a standard, so we're, we're putting the ladder on, on your fifth wheel for you. So, let's just go ahead and go up top to the mezzanine. This plant is a uh, 66,000 uh, square foot manufacturing plant. Excuse me guys, sorry. And uh, most uh, RV manufacturing plants are 105,000 square feet. So we've got a little smaller footprint than a lot of our brothers and sisters that build RVs, but where we made it up, is we actually have more mezzanine space than what they do. So I have about double the mezzanine space in a 66,000 square foot building than what most manufacturing plants that you see in videos might be a little bit larger and you see a lot of these uh, operations on the floor. So we've, we've adapted and we learned to do them up on the deck. So all of our roofs and our uh, roofing sections are built up here on the deck. We use a, a five and a quarter wood roof bow truss every 16 on center. And then wherever you got a vent or an AC or some sort of routed out opening, we'll actually double those up to increase that strength in the opening for like when you place an AC. So they lift these up by human hands. They'll lower that <coughs> mezzanine and scaffold they actually walk those roof sections and they'll set them in those pieces and then they'll actually screw them down. So as you can see over there, that's what it looks like with the boards, actually still holding it across and keeping it all square and keeping it all together. And then now you see the finished product after they've actually set the, the roof on it before they actually set the, the wiring in it and the decking. Because the next section over is what we call our, our roof rough wire. So floor plan by floor plan, our electricians know exactly how much wire to pull by hand, how much, uh, where they want to drop it down. And as you can see, most RVers always think that the, the wiring's coming from the very bottom and coming up. Almost all the, the wiring in an RV is actually coming through the roof and coming down. So if you can get me a, a close up of that, it'll give them a, a real good indication that you got basically two raceways, one on the right and one on the left. And that's where the main bulk of the wire is run and then it gets pulled left to right and dropped down on the interior walls to, uh, to come down either to the converters or lights or switches or appliances or the monitor panel and, and everything that, that we power up in an RV. And it takes a lot of wire. So we, uh, we go through a lot of wire throughout the uh, throughout the manufacturing process. Coming over to this station, we call this roof decking. So on this scaffold, they're taking the three quarter inch OSB sheathing and they're putting on every, everywhere where you see a, a little white streak out there is actually a, a piece of fiberglass tape 
that they run across the seams. If uh, we were watching them install it, you'd actually see them take a, a grinder and they grind across all those seams and all those fasteners to make sure that you don't have any protrusions sticking up so that when we get further down the line and we show you how we install your rubber roof, you don't have any uh, penetration or, or punctures. So it's this uh, necessary group here that's uh, helping the group down there be the best rubber roofers that they can be. And that should cover uh, everything that we want to cover up on the mezzanine, so let's drop back down. So in these areas of the plant, it's kind of like a, like a sports team. You got, your, you got your quarterbacks and your running backs out here on the line, but then you got your linemen back here kind of off the, the line that, that really make the, the magic happen. So, so back here, they're prepping on all the parts and they're, they're getting all the parts ready and they're, they're making up the, the small parts and putting them in kits and they bring them up to the line and you see them in the, in the boxes and the baskets and then you've got your assemblers and that take all the, the work that they put in the, the process of building your unit and then they're actually installing it in the, the final product. So what you saw up on the roof, now we're, now we're on the ground. So you're starting to see all the wire harnesses that we showed you up top and how they're getting pulled into their areas for all the, the recepts and the switches and the lights and the power events and the AC. And it's like I said, so a lot of people think that the, the wiring was running from the, the bottom up, but it's really, really running from the top down. The only wires that you really have in your, your underbelly are the ones for your monitor, uh, probes for your holding tanks and some of your clearance lights that are actually built into the frame that you have to have by code. So moving forward up the line, now you've got your box basically set. So you've got all your roof on, you got your sidewalls on, you got your hoop tied in, you got all your, your cabinets in, and uh, your rough wire is still getting completed. But now you see what's missing. So they've cut out the, the base plate to the slide out box because you're gonna go three more stations and you're gonna see where that slide box is gonna be set. But you've got your whole basically box already in its stability because your walls are tied to the frame, your roof is tied to your walls and your box integrity is all there. So here's a good moment. We've hit it at the right time. So this happens to be a unit that's built with a, a fiberglass sidewall. So we use an actual six millimeter, um, very high gloss uh, sheet glass. So that's actually poured in a mold all in one piece. It is not a coil product that comes from a foreign country. It's built right here in the United States. So it's got a 2.7 double backed Luon on the back. They'll bring it into position. You can see the, the white urethane that's already been put onto the traditional sidewall construction. They push it. And then when they're done actually securing it, they'll actually put braces across it and then it'll get two line rolls to actually cure before they take those braces off because it's actually a, a high speed, um, high cure urethane glue that we use to put that sidewall on. Gives you a nice clean finish and you can kind of peek and see ahead that the, the one in front of it's already been set, already has the, uh, the decals on and uh, is rolling in the process. We'll let them raise this up and then we'll, we'll sneak underneath the, the scaffold. Yeah. There you go. So and that's what that sidewall looks like once it's actually set. They still got some clamps on it. Still got clamps on here, but they're starting to actually put the, uh, the decals and do some of the, uh, the exterior things. So this is uh, the area of the plant is what we actually call uh, sidewall set. And then we're getting into metal. 
Metal is a fancy term for that we're gonna start filling all of these holes and, and making it look more like an RV. So sidewalls are on, skirts are on, decal. As you can see, once the sidewall is set, the graphics will be put on. And then we actually put the graphics on the cap as they sit on the ground. So they make all their measurements and they know precisely where those sidewall graphics are gonna be so that they match up every time to the, the front cap when the front cap gets set. The front cap gets set right in this station here. And as you can see, not only is it a, a beautiful front cap with an automotive wrap on it, but we put a, a lot of cool LED lights on it. And uh, rather than go to the back mezzanine, let's go ahead and jump up the stairs here. So up here, we talked about back in where we did our decking. So you can see the fiberglass tape that goes across all the seams. You can see where the, the plumbing now is coming up through the roof, which ties into where I told you where all the plumbing was coming up through cabinet set and floor set. So you now got all your drain plumbing coming up through the, the roof. It comes over into what we call the, the rubber roof scaffold. And this is where we uh, apply a, a rubber roof. So they basically uh, use a water-based uh, adhesive. They'll roll it on like a, a paint roller all the way 100% across all of that decking. They'll roll on the, the rubber roof and they will squeegee out all the, uh, the air composites and, and wrinkles that they can. And then as you can see, they'll set the, the solar panel, they'll set the TV antenna, the skylights, the vents, the uh, air conditioners and everything else that attaches to your roof in this area also. And then they use uh, uh, alpha sealant, lap sealant, which is a self-leveling sealant on the, the roof to seal it all up. So moving back down. We were showing them where the brake area was. No. Moving back down is where I showed you where they cut out that base plate because they basically had tied in all the rest of the box. This area here is where we actually install uh, all the slide rooms. So in metal, I told you we were plugging all the holes. So now you see that all the windows are in. You see that your baggage doors are in, your uh, outside city fill and coax hookup, your fuel station, monitor, where you hook in your power cord. All of those holes now are plugged and filled. Your skirting's going on and they wheel these boxes over and they bring a tow motor in, they lift them up and they actually set your box in the opening. So this is where we call slide out set. And that's uh, one of the final processes where the main integrity of the box is pretty much all set except for the ramp door still needs to be put on. So as you can see in this area, they've set the box. They're starting to hook up the electrical on the bottom. They've already put the, uh, the mechanism on the inside. They've made all the needed adjustments to make sure that that's as tight as a string, like on a guitar. Shouldn't be loose and shouldn't be too tight. So looks like right there, they've got it just right. So it's a good day here at XLR. So one of the features that we've kept on XLR is our more ride sure step. So we actually put the, the boost logo in it. We feel that it's, it's sturdy for our customers that are going off the grid. One of the, the features that we added for it this year that I wanted to point out is you used to have to pull a pin. It was a little awkward because if you weren't hefty like me that uh, you had to hold the step and pull the pin at the same time. Now you just have these two little latches. You hit those with your thumb. You can put that to, to any distance that you want locks it back in, it makes it a whole lot easier. So again, just another extra built item here at XLR. Moving here to the back so we can scoot a little bit easier. When you get to these areas, this is where they're starting to do a, a lot of the trim, a lot of the cabinet work. Um, I like to say it's a lot of the dirty work. So 
they're creating uh, creating a lot of dust, a lot of sawdust, because uh, they're basically doing a lot of the cleanup. So they're blowing all the, the rat outs and the, the sawdust that was in the roof and all those routes that we showed you, both in the roof and in the floor. They're now blowing it all into a central location because they're gonna start putting in the, uh, the frilly items like the furniture and the cabinet doors and, uh, and putting the finishing touches on the unit so they can actually start getting, sweeping them out and getting them cleaner as we move up the line. So all through there, cabinet doors, interior doors, you know, some of the soft good trims, the, the sit and sleep is getting put in, the uh, rollover happy jacks are getting put in. And then in this area, you actually get the final touches of where we showed you all the way from the beginning, where one of the first items that went on was the, the hoop for the ramp door. Well, one of the last items that goes on is the door that actually fits in that hoop. So everything is built, everything is square, the, the ramp door that comes on that makes uh, XLR special because we are uh, exclusively a toy hauler manufacturing and producer is, uh, is the ramp door. So in 2022, 20, uh, we actually went to a, a all blacked out rear door, makes our uh, logo pop off like Star Wars and look very, very cool. And um, we also went to a, uh, a slimmer uh, VIP deck on the back and that's a, a standard that comes with every one. So if you get to a dealership and uh, they get fooled a little bit that they say, hey, my, uh, my VIP deck is too short and it, it doesn't fit so that we could actually make this stack smaller and fold inside each other, which gained us a whole another inch of garage space when that's in the stored position. We had uh, our friends at Moride basically uh, integrate a pin in here that's like a tent post and then that telescopes. So as soon as you push that in, it releases it. And then when you wanna put it back in the stored position, you just push it back. So that's another one of those extra built items that our competitors don't have for uh, XLR boost. And then just out of vanity, because we want to be cool, we, uh, we actually had them etch in uh, a metal plate on the back just to give us some branding on the back so people at the campground um, know that you chose to buy from the best. And then coming to the last station, and uh, we're getting ready to go on holiday break. so. This unit isn't uh, ready to get pulled off the scale, but this is what we call uh, final finish and uh, last inspection. So the unit gets pulled onto a scale. We have a weight house, so you can be confident that every unit that we build with the options that uh, are listed on the MSRP are actually weighed in that unit. And when it's all said and done, look inside your uh, entry door and there'll be a tag there that actually will tell you how long that unit is and what that unit specifically weighed and uh, what, uh, what model it is. So one last thing that we do at XLR Boost that I think is better than the, the rest of our competition is we have actually integrated a, basically a double check system. So, you know, kind of like Aaron Rodgers, you know, the double check. We've got, we can basically do all the testing that we do online all over again on a small sampling each day of the manufacturing process that's going up the line. And that's what we basically call our CAI process here in the back. So as you can see, we still will redo our flood testing. So we'll take your uh, freshwater tank and your, your holding tanks and we'll fill them up with uh, antifreeze and uh, test all the, the plumbing parts on it and the capacities on it. We'll also take a, an air reading on your fresh water lines and we'll run that up to 40 PSI to make sure that all the connections are good and that, that it holds for at least a, a 30 minute time period for that test. We'll redo all the gas testing and then uh, just really the, the operation of the slides again, operations of the jacks again, hook LP bottle on it, fire off all the appliances, make sure that the microwave and everything works, monitor panels, and then just a, a full walk around visually on uh, the outside and uh, a full walk around visually on, on the inside. So it's nice to know that out of a plant that's running right now at six to eight units a day, basically uh, five of those units out of the week are coming in this plant. And then on every Tuesday, the, the manufacturing uh, managers that are responsible for the quality control and making sure that your unit is a good unit before it heads out to your dealership, uh, basically meet in this unit, have a small meeting, look over all the, uh, the write-ups, talk about the, the functional testing, and that gets immediate feedback right back into the line. So 
This is one that they basically pulled right out of final finish and uh, pulled over here today. So it hasn't yet been all the way through that process, but uh, would give you a good idea of if it didn't come through the CIA process of uh, coming over to, uh, to your dealership. So with that being said, I'm Kelly Green, product manager with XLR. I appreciate you watching the tour. I hope that it gave you a few of the insight of you know what goes on in the XLR uh, plant. We're very proud of being the only uh, manufacturer within Forest River that is exclusive to, to toy haulers. And if you want to check us out, you can go to